I think it was a game of like really few chances for both sides. I think we had our big chance right by by the end, 90 minute period. That's when I thought that was our moment to win the game. We didn't take our chance. Um, they took their chance. Each team had one big chance the game. It was, I didn't think there was much in it. In fact, I thought it was quite a poor game, to be honest, for both sides. Um, and as always, listen, when you're on the losing side of it, you always feel disappointment. But I can't ask any more of the players. I think they gave everything they, you know, they could give. And there seemed to be a bit of aggro between you and the game. I mean, you want to really see me when I've got a bit of aggro. But <laughs> like, um, listen, I think there's a way to conduct yourself on the touchline. I really do, and I, I think that is absolutely essential we role model in the right way but I'm not down for male aggression on the touchline I'm not and fronting up with players for me that's unacceptable and yeah I was disappointed and I told Jonas that um I don't think it's okay to behave like that um he got a yellow card and in fact he probably should have been sent off I'm all for competing to win I've never been booked in 12 years you know my time here I totally accept he's a winner and he wants to win, but his behaviour on the top side wasn't acceptable. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think there was a couple, it was with Anne trying to get the ball, but I think the way he fronted up to Aaron, I didn't think it was acceptable. Listen, I don't think we should blow it up. I know we all want to do that. It was an incident. I'm I'm sure when he's calm, we can have a conversation about it. I was clear with him. I did not think it was acceptable. It's not the first time he's been told about his behaviour on the touchline. And I don't think we need to make a massive story out of it. The problem is you're going to. Um, I want to just say congratulations to Arsenal. They've won. And I don't want the talking point to be about that. Emma, can I ask you, is the punishing, do you think the punishing timetable of matches that you had in March um, resulted in today's? If we score with less than a few minutes to go with LJ at the end and maybe squares it to Nuska, would you ask me the same question? Well, probably not, no. No, it's a, it's a game of few chances and... They took theirs when, you know, we could have had two or three opportunities to clear the ball in the last part. It was a game where I think a single goal was going to settle it. Um, of course, a, a punishing schedule doesn't help, but I thought we grew in the game. I thought we were better in the second half. Uh, yeah, of course, tough on the players physically because it's unbelievable, you know, demanding schedule, but... We're Chelsea, we don't make excuses like that. Yeah. I don't know what's happened, so I can't comment on it, but player welfare is always like the most important thing, and I hope she's okay, because, like I said, I don't know what happened, I just know I shouted for my doctor to go and help, and I really hope she's okay. Um, no, I didn't. Um, but I felt that going forward, um, we didn't use the ball well enough in the first half. That was our biggest problem. They locked us off to play down the right. Didn't switch it enough. Um, I thought we didn't take care of the ball in the right ways, and we can always, you know, say could have, should have done this. We knew that at half time, and thought we had better control of the play, and it was more us in control, them counter attacking in the second half. And that's football matches. Sometimes you have it right in the first, sometimes in the second. Um, but no, I don't. I think Guru is, you know, coming to the game, but wanted to put more threat onto their back line. Um, 
like I said, from that left hand side, LJ and City could have won the game for us with a few minutes to go. So again, in the game of margins, we're talking about a different narrative because it didn't go in. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I, I would have happy to give them both one, but the rules don't permit that, and I said they'll split it fifty fifty. I want to keep developing them as leaders. It's good for them. Yeah. How much will this drive you on in the pre or the competition with the really end of first team final for the Western Premier's medal? Look, we've got so much to play for. This isn't our only competition. This is one of four that we're competing for. Um, our schedule is gruelling, but we, this is... This is the challenge you have in our situation. Man City have a game on the 21st of April and they have four games left. We could have up to, you know, nine, ten games. I don't know, I can't remember, but like that, just to compete for everything means that you're vulnerable in many ways because I'm a thousand percent sure that the team that hasn't won many trophies or are going for a league, for example, yeah, it's easy to, to do that one. You have to do it again and again and again and again for every competition. You do it every season. We've been in nine out of ten cup finals in a period of time. The last two we didn't show up. I don't think that was the challenge in the team today. I think it was a counter-attacking team where both teams dropped off, played a little bit of counter-attack, which I think made it a dull and boring game. But listen, I'm, you know, I'm 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 not disappointed with the players. I think they they're, they're giving absolutely everything, even though you know that was uh, physically quite taxing for 120 minutes. Cool. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.